Okay, we will call this meeting to order. This is the March 7th meeting of Yellow Springs Village Council. Uh, Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Wintrow. Here. Housh. Here. Sims. Here. McQueen. Yes. Hempflin. Here. Also present are uh, Village Solicitor Chris Connor, Village Manager Patty Bates, and absent this evening is Melissa Van Zandt, Assistant Village Manager. She's out of town. Thank you. Um, in our, because, uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, consent agenda. Oh, let's talk about announcements. Do we have any announcements? Yeah. Um, I just I want to acknowledge something that um, Brian mentioned at our last council meeting about the community solutions seventy uh, fifth anniversary. Not a lot of organizations have been around for seventy five years, which is pretty impressive. And um, started by Arthur Morgan, and I think actually nineteen. Um, their offices are now in the Fells building at the uh, southwest corner of the Fells building. Really cool to see this new move. And here's their magazine that came out for this celebration. And if you go to their offices, you can get it. But, you know, it has a lot of stuff about the organization and about Yellow Springs and our history. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I had a few announcements. Um, so as I was walking down to the meeting, uh, I felt like kicking off my Sunday shoes, and that's because I was thinking about Footloose, which is uh, the high school musical this year. And uh, so if you missed it last weekend, um, they have three more shows this weekend, Friday and Saturday at 8, and Sunday at 2, and that's at Mills Lawn. I also wanted to mention another uh, important organization in town who's having their annual meeting this Sunday which is Home Inc. And that's going to be at the Coretta Scott King Center at 2 o'clock. And um, I also uh, wanted to mention there's a really great video on the uh, Village of Yellow Springs Facebook page, which uh, is now only one. We uh, absorbed the other random one out there. And uh, it's a video of uh, Ms. Morgan's class that was uh, sort of uh, I guess added to by the Bulldog News crew and uh, so that's really cute that was posted today and I would suggest checking it out and are you going to talk about March 15th or um, I think we can well I mean I guess we can election day is March 15th um, we have a levy on the ballot we actually will be talking about it a little bit later in the meeting um, but please go vote on March 15th everybody in Yellow Springs is to vote at Antioch University Midwest. Um, I have an announcement. Um, uh, just for people who don't know, tomorrow night at 8 o'clock is the uh, Yellow Springs Bulldogs uh, basketball game. Mm -hmm. They're part of Sweet 16. They're the last 16 uh, teams in the state in their, what do you call it? Their division. Division. And they, pl it was a fantastic game last week, and I really encourage people to go. It's going to be in Kettering. And it's I at Fairmont, Fairmont High School, Trent Arena in Fairmont High School, which is, it basically spans, it's between 48 and, or Route 48 South, and then, but I think actually you get into it off of Schroyer Road on the back side. Yeah, <clears throat> really fun. Uh, the team was fantastic to, I felt really proud of them. <laughs> Well, they won by one, one point, the, the really exciting game, they won by just one point. They won by a ton the last game, yeah. and they played fantastic the whole game. It was really fun to watch them. Cool. Okay, anything else? Okay, moving on to the consent agenda. We have the minutes of February 16th meeting. Um, we did have... Um, new minutes um, on our table um, that with some grammatical and spelling corrections from Brian Hausch. I assume there was no substantive, there were no substantive changes. No. Uh, so, I can, <clears throat> excuse me, can I get a motion to approve? I so move. Second. <clears throat> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Abstain. Okay. Um, I'll just go ahead and do petitions and communications because the only thing in there was the mayor's monthly report. Are we going to review the agenda? Um, sure. Review of agenda. Um, anything? I, have a, I just have a suggestion about the mayor's report in terms of the task force. What, when the task force gets going, that we get a report of how many cases come to the mayor's court. 
I think it would be interesting to know how many cases that might have come, I mean, that would be uh, qualified to come to the mayor's court, go to Xenia. That seems like that would be part of maybe the chief's report rather than, because Dave's not going to know what yeah. could have come yeah. to him, I would assume. Yeah. Yeah, we can certainly talk to the chief about that, yes. He'll be here later in the meeting, so. Okay. Good idea. And we do have an item of legislation to add uh, resolution 2016-15, recognizing Peace Week at Mills Lawn, March 14th to 18th. Anything else uh, related to the agenda? Okay. Um, so we'll move on to, um, we do have actually quite a few uh, resolutions and um, pieces of legislation here. Uh, first one is Ordinance 2016-2. I think we can read that in by title only. Oh, thank goodness. This is to approve the <coughs> assignment of the Village of Yellow Springs interest in the Fremont Power Sales contract with American Municipal Power Incorporated to the City of Coldwater, Michigan, and taking other actions in connection therewith. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. <coughs> Okay, this is something that I think we uh, directed Patty to do oh. a few months ago. Um, Patty, would you explain briefly? Yeah. Yes, the, this is uh, part of the portfolio realignment that um, we brought to council at the recommendation of the Energy Board uh, last year. Um, we have to pass an ordinance with the attachment um, in order to essentially sell our interest in the Fremont Energy um, that part of our portfolio to Coldwater, Michigan. It has to be sold to another AMP community that has an interest in Fremont. Fremont is the natural gas and partially coal-fired um, generation uh, that we have in our portfolio. Okay, and um, the, the reason that this is being done is because Energy Board and Council supports reducing um, the carbon fossil, footprint. reducing our carbon footprint um, and, and getting rid of the natural gas um, fired and having the opportunity to take on additional um, alternative. Um, yes. And just to be clear, we're not losing, there is no money exchanging hands, no. there is no, no loss or anything no. harmful to the village. That's correct. They are <clears throat> simply assuming our contract um, at, at the same rate they're not paying us anything. We're not paying them anything. We will simply no longer own part of AFEC or Fremont. Okay. So when we talked about this initially, this was when we you know, had the opportunity to submit our letter of intent to uh, realign our portfolio. I remember there was some discussion that if uh, the municipality taking over our obligation didn't meet there, obligations that it could come back to us uh, that has been that um, requirement has been changed okay and so we will not be obligated to so assume we're, any we're responsibility we're, that's okay. correct that's good to know um, any other comments or questions this is a first reading so it will come back to are we going to do two readings yeah. on this one yes it will come back to council any other questions or comments from council Rick any questions or comments thank you um, Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Hempfling? Yes. McQueen? Yes. <clears throat> Sims? Yes. Housh? Yes. Wintra? Yes. Next is resolution 2016-07, just title only, and then we'll spend the bulk of the time talking about the goals yeah, themselves. The Indeed, this is adopting Village Council annual goals for 2016. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. So um, the actual resolution hasn't changed because the resolution um, talks about our values, um, deepen the decision-making processes, be an excellent employer and provider of services, be a welcoming community, pursue a strong economy, um, and seek in all our decisions and actions to reduce the carbon footprint as we just passed legislation, and provide careful, creative, and cooperative stewardship of land resources. So this, I think, will be our third time looking at this. Um, at the last meeting, I think we had um, kind of finalized um, the changes that we wanted to make um, and any, you know, kind of cleared up any language issues. Um, the only thing that I, I know that, that Mary Ann, I don't know if you, you and Judith want to talk about the final two. I think that's the only th place of where there was any substantive change. 
Um, so yeah, the village justice system review and update is a new um, is a new goal of the council. Um, I can <coughs> read out what it says for people. Want me to do that? Sure. Okay. Uh, so the uh, anticipated results are stronger, more effective mayor's court that incorporate incorporates restorative justice principles and has an increased referral rate from the YSPD, strengthened public trust in the YSPD across race, age, and income groups, increased public understanding of the police department policy and practice, and updated police department policy to reflect best practices and community values. And uh, in the activities required to reach the goal uh, the Village Council will create a Village Justice System Task Force to research and develop recommendations regarding the following. The Mayor's Court, Restorative Justice Practices, YSPD Practice and Policy, <coughs> New Developments in Municipal pol Policing that Address Institutional Racism, and Alternative Municipal Policing Approaches to Drug Control. And just to clarify, um, the recommendations, this is the task force of the council. The recommendations will come to the council. They won't go to the police department directly. So this will be something that will be brought to the council. Um, the time frame, uh, I, it's, it's going to be, you know, a fair amount of research that the people in the task force will be doing. Um, that will be a lot of the work of the committee. Um, 2016 to 2018 is the time frame that we put in. Um, the persons responsible um, include the council, Mayor Fobert, Chief Hale, the Human Relations Commission, the solicitor, the Justice System Task Force, and our village manager, Patty Bates, and resources, and they will also be resources, some of those people, uh, but uh, also as resources, the village mediation, um, what's the uh, program, the U.S. Department of Justice, uh, initiatives in other communities, TCN and NAMI are the ones we identified. Are there any questions? Mm -mm. Okay. So uh, do you have a time frame for, uh, I was I mean, hoping <coughs> the next meeting, or one of the next two meetings to be bringing a more specific proposal about the task force. Uh, and if there's any input, uh, council wants to provide and uh, if Marianne, you know, wants to help me with that. Um, I mean, is it going to go so far as to just, as, as to potentially be a charge that we could, I mean, I don't I, think I we're saw going to be charge. ready for legislation, but. Um. No, 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 it'll be for discussion. <clears throat> okay. But I see the charge as primarily what's identified here. Okay. It's, but it's, it'll be written in that format that it yes, could potentially yeah. go directly to legislation because I'm assuming we'll have to, it'll have to be done. Can we do this by ordinance or? Um, resolution. It's, it's a temporary it's a task, task force, force so, so we can just do that by resolution. Right, be, right. You know, not an ongoing, but. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, sounds good. Uh, Mary Ann, do you want to talk yeah, about? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> um, so the last goal is uh, develop a master plan for the glass farm to include mixed income housing, a solar array, and a wetland area, and then to implement the plan. And um, the result of that would be a plan and its implementation on the glass farm as a multi-use area that serves the housing needs of the village and provides for recreation, education, environmental, and green energy needs. Um, it, so in regard to this goal, which is a long-term goal, it's listed as uh, 2016 to 2020, but in terms of completion, I would anticipate it would take a longer time, probably maybe a decade, possibly. Um, at any rate, I met, had a meeting with Patty Bates. I met with Judith, uh, had, had emails with both of them, and then the three of us met to talk about this so that as much as possible we could be on the, the, the same page. And uh, one thing that we decided is that given staff's workload, staff would not be doing anything on this until what did you say about july or yeah. yeah after we get streetscape done and and at least the solar array is is underway mm -hmm. and um this year i would 
see primarily being gathering information. Gathering information about other communities that have done any kind of similar projects. Um, talking to Antioch College, for example, to find out um, anything, you know, other players within the community. So that's what I envision for this year. I would like to see number two come out of there. I would like to see implement the plan because I see, I see the goals section as being what we're going to accomplish in 2016. And I don't think if we get to the development of a master plan at the end of 2016, I'll be surprised. No, yeah, I do <clears throat> not anticipate that we would get to the development of a plan. Just sort of. So can we can we just say implement? Can we take out implement the plan? That just seems. Um, it, it seems like too much to have for for a single goal for this goal right now. I mean, we did the same thing with the um, fiber optic. Um, again, it's not what we're going to be doing in 2016. Let me defer to uh, Patty and Judith to see if they have anything to say about that. I, I'm not sure. <clears throat> my, um, my thought, I had, I had kind of pushed for something, you know, acknowledging a commitment to the goal <laughs> versus we're just going to think about maybe doing the goal. But, um, but developing a master plan is pretty ambitious. Okay. I mean, that alone is shows a commitment that, Absolutely. that was okay that was my main reason yeah, for that's, wanting okay. to just <clears throat> there is a, a real commitment. I just want to take it in state this <clears throat> logical okay. stages that so okay if, if well, Patty, do you well I mean I I was going to kind of agree with with um, with Judith that you know we need to have a, a you know a goal that we can reach but I do believe that the development of the master plan reaches that I would suggest if you take the second part out that we change the time frame a yes, little bit because you you don't want it to be uh, you don't want it to take the the five years to to develop right the master plan. so 2017 so you need, maybe yeah you need to change the the goal timeline <clears throat> so, uh, to make it more restrictive so say 2017 right and then as you move ahead then you can add the implement the plan as the next phase of that goal and, and maybe under um, anticipated results maybe there could be a line about you know this is anticipated to be um, five-year five-year project uh, well it put you mean to put implementation anticipated to be a five-year project mm hmm okay so implementation still in there is just not listed right. under the actual goals Um, let me just review the others. Let me just go through. So, uh, and again, we these are we're listing them in, in an order, but there's not they're not prioritized. Um, first, we've got water projects. Complete plans for the water plant and begin construction in July 2016. Well, have protection plan update and implementation. I'm not going to go through all of the all of the extension on any of these. Um, Create a, next is create a sustainable economic development strategy to support existing businesses and entrepreneurs and attract new opportunities that support the values of the community. Um, and that's relating to some of the work of the Economic Sustainability Commission, um, potentially looking at the, at the comp plan, um, develop a plan to address business expansion needs. Those are some of the activities um, that we're talking about. <clears throat> Next is develop a strategy for fiscal sustainability. Um, first and foremost on that is passage of the property tax levy on March 15th. Um, we've, last year Melissa gave a great presentation on revenue options and I think she has plans to continue to explore additional revenue options. Um, one of the things we talked about at the last meeting is to develop a capital plan um, for all of the village assets. And then um, again, to continue to look at publicly owned property and whether there are, um, you know, potential revenue opportunities there or use opportunities that would be more effective. Uh, next is decide a strategy for sidewalk repairs and new construction, and um, 
we are completing the downtown streetscape. We actually have, have legislation tonight um, for, for completing the downtown streetscape, so that's part of it. But then it's really more a matter of how we're going to address um, a long-term strategy, and that's going to have some funding discussions involved. We've received a lot of information with, from staff on a plan, but now we've got to talk about the funding. Um, next is work with community organizations. <clears throat> commissions and staff to, re to develop a plan to reduce energy use and increase environmental sustainability. And again, we have legislation tonight about a solar project. Um, I don't know if we have legislation, we just have a report. Um, so s looking at a solar project is one part of that and then continued development of the climate action plan that's something that Environmental Commission and Energy Board are working on. Um, and next is explore development of a municipally owned fiber optic network that will support all Yellow Springs citizens and encourage economic development. Um, at the last meeting, um, SpringsNet made a, a detailed proposal um, and asked for a work session and that's something we agreed to. So that's something that we need to do this year. And as part of that, after we come out of that, they are uh, planning to work on developing a proof of concept to support the project itself, um, that, that it is economically um, and, and operationally sustainable. So, so that's, that's where we are on the goals and then the two that, that, that uh, Judith and uh, uh, Mary Ann just reviewed. So any other comments or questions from council? I just have one question <coughs> on, on one six uh, under, I think it would be resources. The bullet says full for and nonprofit uh, housing developers. I'm trying to understand what that means. Oh, um, well, a for profit housing developer oh. would be like oh, so over. That, and, well, no. oh, okay, so it should be for profit. For, let's say for, yeah. <laughs> that probably makes sense. <laughs> you, you, it's a little hard I, when you read it, yeah. Yeah, yeah for I was profit. It, I, was, I was trying to figure out uh, right what here. came after that. How do you want to change it? Then? Just oh, say for, for profit. profit and oh, yeah. Okay. We got it. Okay, that was my only. Yeah. Okay. I kept thinking maybe Thank I you. miss something. <laughs> Comments or questions from citizens? Seeing and hearing none, we'll come back to the table and take a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, next is uh, resolution 2016-10, authorizing a contract with Shook Construction for design and construction of the new water plant. Um, let's see, how long is that? Um, why don't you go ahead and read it in full? Sure. Whereas the Village Council desires to construct a new water plant to include iron and manganese removal and pellet softening for the Village of Yellow Springs, the project, and whereas Council has appointed an evaluation committee to complete the selection process, process regarding the project, and whereas the evaluation committee determined that Shook Construction Company with Jones and Henry <coughs> Engineers Limited as engineer of record provided the proposal for the project that best fits the village's needs. And whereas Shook Construction Company and Jones and Henry Engineers have to date no unresolved findings for recovery on record with the Auditor of State, now therefore be it resolved by the Council of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, that section one, the village manager is authorized to enter into a contract with Shook Construction, Construction Company to, to design and build the project. Section 2 said contract shall provide for a design build fee to Shook Construction Company in the amount of $617,640, which shall be included in a guaranteed maximum price for the project to be established in accordance with the contract subject to adjustments as provided in the contract, which shall be substantially, substantially similar to attachment A. Section 3 this resolution shall go into effect at the earliest period allowed by law. Can I have a motion, <coughs> a motion please? So moved. Second. Um, Patty, I'll just turn this over to you. Okay. Um, this is the the first part of the contract um, that uh, will be brought uh, regarding the design and construction of the new water plant. There will be um, certain amendments to it as, as we go on. A guaranteed maximum price will not be reached until sometime around mid-August. There's been a slight change in the uh, in the construction schedule, which once I get that hammered out, I will be bringing to council. I know there have been some questions about the process and the the cost of the plant and the increase in the cost of the plant from what was originally presented to council back in <coughs> 2011. 
I have included a, a brief in there that I think answers a lot of those questions. Uh, the original price that was brought forward by LJB engineers in 2011 was $3.9 million, and that was quoted in one of their documents. Um, there are several reasons that this is not the cost of the plant today. Um, the first reason is um, first that this was five years ago, and it was when the economy was uh, a little bit less robust. Um, there were contractors out there that were hungry for work. Um, it's also because this is uh, this quote was based on a package plant, which is basically a cookie cutter plant where they design certain sections of the plant that can be dropped into this plant or that plant, and they're just generic pieces of equipment. They're not what we're asking. It also includes uh, softening, which was not in that original quote. There was a problem with um, the estimate that came from our criteria engineer, which was HNTB, and quite frankly, there's, there's not a justifiable reason for the fact that their estimate was low. Um, they have been counseled about that pretty significantly. They, they know we're not happy about that. Um, at the end of the day, we received two uh, submissions to build the plant. We received one from Shook um, and one from CDM Smith. And these two submissions were very similar in price. I mean, there was probably only a, a, a few hundred dollars difference between the two of them, which indicates to me that the submissions were actually market pricing. Um, and what it would actually cost to build the plant today. Um, we negotiated with Shook down from $10 million to $7 million with value added alternatives, which is part of the design build process. And so we are currently at $7,209,233. That could go down a little bit. I don't expect it to go down much. I expect it to end up right around $7 million. Is there a possibility that it could go up a little bit? Yes, because you never know what you're going to run into until you start actually breaking ground and putting things in. But at this point, we don't expect that to happen. It, so um, other than that, if anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them. Um, yeah. <coughs> First of all, I think that um, it's important as for council to be very, as they say, transparent, mm -hmm. although that's an overused word, I think, um, about this process of how, mm -hmm. how we have arrived at the different price points. Mm -hmm. And I have a, a question I have, for, uh, what was the price that HNTB indicated? 5.3. They had 4.9, but then you had to add in the, the pellet softening and the, and the HNTB contract. So it ended up at 5.3 was what was actually advertised. So it's yeah, $2 million more than what they... Yes. Okay. And we're paying them about a half a million dollars yes. for their advice yes. and design. Um, I, I read this contract, no. which I guess the, the contract that our contract for the plant will be based on. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's very thorough. I'm wondering, is there anything in our contract with HNTB that um, would provide us some relief for their substantial error not not unless they were truly negligible and I don't believe that they were negligible we were not out any money um, at this point is it is it more than we expected yes it's more than we expected but as far as did it actually damage us in some way um, I, the only relief that we would have under their contract would be for negligence so um, I don't I don't believe that we could actually say that we were harmed by their poor um, estimate. We had four, four um, companies that we were Yes, and two of them dropped out. Inter and did those two drop out because they felt like they weren't going to be able to match that $5.2 million price tag? One of them dropped out. We were, one of them dropped out before the process even really got started. Um, and we don't know what their reason was other than that they just said they weren't interested in the project. The other one, which was Peterson, um, said that they had too many other larger projects going on that they decided they didn't want to bid on our smaller one. Mm -hmm. So, But Patty, am I not correct that um, 
as leading up to the actual request for proposals that that um, Sam was getting phone calls from yes. these contractors about the estimate. I mean, they right. were they saw early on right. that the 5.3 million was right. But the contractors who were interested. Yes, yes. and we actually did um, when we had the meeting <clears throat> with the four contractors here. They did ask, you know, how what if the price were higher? Mm -hmm. ah. So. I mean, we had indicators that said the price might be too low. I, I actually had someone come from Springfield who wanted us to consider going back with yeah. Springfield because they had heard that we weren't going to build this plant for less than seven million dollars. Yeah. And and I take so. your point that uh, the fact that the two uh, <coughs> companies that did bid were very close to yes. each other, indicating yeah. that that is a reasonable correct price. Right. Correct was a reasonable price. Yeah. I, I do want to also point out that given that we're paying the 4000 whatever it is, the mm -hmm. 409 whatever we're paying HMTB uh -huh. brings up the total cost to much closer to $8 million. It, it, yes, it brings it closer, yes. Okay. Um, I wasn't a part of the discussion, uh, you know, to uh, since I wasn't on the council at the time. Um, but one thing I do wonder is that given if the council had known the price was going to be that high, if decisions might have been different in regards to, uh, you know, deciding on uh, the softening, for example. Um, so I guess, you know, when you're, I'm not, I'm not uh, sure what should be done of that but I do think when people get numbers that's part of how you're making your decision so then you're already down that road and now you're finding out and it's hard to then double back and say well let's reconsider again uh, what other options we have mm -hmm. so in that sense there is harm done I feel mm -hmm. but I don't I mean I wasn't here for those discussions but so I don't know what people were thinking at the time uh, but in terms of the council, you know, trying to think what the right. what uh, debt the village could bear, right. you know, the villagers can bear um, relative to the cost of this project. Right. Although, uh, if right. we would have if we would have gone traditional design bid build, at this point we would probably just be finishing up the design, the actual engineering drawings right. that would then go out to bid. We wouldn't know, so we would again be spending mm -hmm. half a million or more on engineer drawings for this plant and we would not know until we got the bids back how much it was going to cost. So we could be in exactly the same situation um, with, um, with the cost. We could be looking at a at, you know, seven, eight million dollar plant. So um, you know, part of the design build process was to expedite the process, was to shortcut some of the process of working with EPA getting um, early agreements and, and um, approvals from EPA. So there was a design behind the reason um, going with the design build. Um, you know, it really does, it really does start <coughs> back and, and, you know, as I'm looking at that, um, the original estimate of 3.8 million, that was, that was an absolute estimate. I mean, that was not a quote that nobody really spent a lot of time working on that. I think that my guess is that the guy from Artesian and Pioneer said this is a how many gallon? One million, one million, gallon. One million gallon plant. A one million gallon plant costs three point eight million dollars with without softening costs that much. So so he didn't do any site work. He didn't look at the site. He didn't he didn't put a lot of time into actually estimating the project. So um, there were a lot of things missing from that, and um, it was a single source. It wasn't there wasn't any comparison made just to know if that was a good price or not. So, um, I mean, I, I absolutely. I mean, I'm as frustrated as can be um, that that the plant has you know that the price of the plant has gotten to this point. Um, but you know, I think I feel good about Melissa's estimates. I feel good about. You know, Patty's been diligent about looking for cheap money, um, looking for grants where we can get them, and um, I feel like I feel like you know we've the the team has really done their due diligence in in um, trying to put together a, a project that is going to be good for this community. 
And I can tell you from sitting in meetings with EPA, they are not going to be happy if we don't do this plan. I mean, they are, they, with just given the condition of our, yeah. the situation we're in yeah. with our existing plan. And, and I would like <clears throat> to, to just clarify, when I say there was no harm done, I mean harm in which we could recoup part of our costs. Are you correct? Was there harm done because council didn't have um, the right information from the beginning, uh, you know, it, all the way through that, yes, there was, because council based their decisions upon the information they were given starting back in 2011 and continuing through now. Um, but I don't, in answer to Mary Ann's question, think there's anything that we could recoup any funding for. And I believe you've talked to Chris about that, haven't right. you? Well, I mean, the project it, it, it's an estimate, and, and it's hard to think that we can go back to 2011. Well, this is a more current. The the 5.3 million that that we got from HNTB was is only a, a year, year and a old. half old. Yeah, yeah a year, year old. <clears throat> I, I agree with Patty's assessment, um, and some of the presumptions that even started the whole process. I think there were flawed assumptions that were developed from the beginning, um, and, and I, I don't see. You know, as 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 being part of the, the team that that helped put this whole thing together, it, it, it is kind of disappointing that uh, HNTB estimated would use a single source pricing, uh, and and to me that's that's where you really fell down. Uh, being an estimator for almost thirty years, you. You never use a single source when you you're trying to come up with your estimate. You know, at at worst case, you're going to get a high and a low on something, and and come somewhere in the middle to present to someone. But with a single source, you have no other basis, mm -hmm. and you know that's just poor estimating. Yes, you know. it is. So, and that's kind of what you did for a living, right? Yeah, but um, see, unfortunately, <coughs> as we went through the process. Uh, we should we, have had you do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just didn't see a whole lot of data as to how the estimate was put mm -hmm. together for the 5.2. Um, and, you know, <laughs> you, you, you just have to assume that an experienced estimator right. would it's have doing done the right that. Thing. Yeah. I appreciate uh, that Patty wrote just uh, summarized the whole process of how uh, it came to this big difference so at least citizens and the council we can have it all in front of us as to what happened um, and Patty can you say um, anything about the work that Melissa has done in terms of projecting out how this will get paid for and how how that fits into how does it translate into people's utility bills and into our financial stability well there is a there's actually a, a, a 30 year projection um, that Melissa has to do that has to go in with the OWDA application tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So we do have that available, but um, she has projected that out. She's included any other capital projects that we have to do, including the water tower rehabs, which are coming up here in a couple of years and, and ha that hasn't been done for a very long time. Um, the water replacement of the water meters with electric read, uh, radio read <coughs> water meters. Um, uh, I believe there's another water project over on Fairfield Road that Johnny um, feels we need to do. Um, so all of those have been projected into the, the capital plan that is included in the increases that council passed last year. So the, so the increases that, that we voted on mm -hmm. yes. and that citizens are unfortunately seeing yes. um, have, are covering this. And that Correct. was the one thing we were absolutely adamant about right. is that we would not go back to citizens for yet another cool. um, increase, that, that what we'd already asked of citizens was as far as we were going to go. That's correct. <clears throat> Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any comments or questions from citizens? <clears throat> <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, guys. <clears throat> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, next is um, Resolution 2016-11.
Just we can do that by title only, it's Judy. Yeah, this is authorizing cooperative agreement between the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, and the Ohio, Ohio Water Development Authority for construction of a new Village of Yellow Springs water plant. Yeah. Uh, can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, Patty, would you explain this one? Yeah, this is the um, this is the six point two million dollar loan um, it's slightly below market rate currently if uh, it would be at 2.8 I believe um, it's a 30-year loan and this will pay for the bulk bulk of the water plant uh, construction in addition to uh, this funding we have uh, 1.3 million dollar zero interest 30-year uh, loan from OPWC as well as a 162,000 788 I believe dollar grant to pay some of the interest on this loan um, through OWDA a companion grant um, and yes that does add up to slightly more than 7.2 million um, but it is so that we can um, make sure that we have that little bit of cushion in there and we don't take the money if we don't use it it's done on draws so if we end up going less than that, then the, the debt that we pay off to OWDA will be less. We will definitely use all of the 0% interest yes, money. Yes, I would hope so. But we, we very likely won't use all of this money. But it's in there, that way we don't have to go back. Any comments or questions? Comments or questions from citizens? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, next is another loan. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, yes. And I'll just do that by title. This is author yes. authorizing Karen Wintrow, Council President, to participate why. in the Ohio Public Works Commission State Capital Improvement and or local transportation improvement programs and to execute contracts as required. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. Second. I'm not sure why my name is in there, but I guess that's the way it has to be. So, uh, yes. Patty, this is the... This is the, the no interest. Uh, yes, this is the Ohio Public <coughs> Works Commission um, infrastructure loan, zero percent interest, one point three million dollars, zero percent for thirty years, and Karen's name is in there because I signed the application, but the agreement has to be signed by the chief executive officer. Okay. I am the chief operating officer. Okay, so hopefully that doesn't mean anything <laughs> legally binding for me, but that's okay. <laughs> See, I, what, I, I hear how much is that? <laughs> 1.3 $1. million dollars for 30 years. Wow. Well, at least there's no interest. Yeah, really. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh that's so good. Um, any comments or questions? <laughs> Citizens? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, next is 2016-13. Title only? Yes. This is awarding bids for construction of public improvements on the west side of Xenia Avenue from Quarry Street to Limestone Street and on the east side of Xenia Avenue from Glen Street to the entrance to the Mills Park Hotel. Thank you. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, this looks like good news. It is good news. Very this good news. This is really good news. Um, we did open the bids for the Streetscape project last um, Monday or Tuesday, I believe. And uh, we did. A, we had four bids: uh, GM Pipeline, Bell Gray Incorporated, Durst Brothers Excavating, and Mark Fincham Invest Excavating. Uh, the bids ranged from two hundred twenty-eight thousand seven hundred dollars to one hundred forty thousand three hundred thirty-eight dollars. After checking references, uh, certified findings for recovery, and all of those things that you do, uh, we would like to recommend that we award the bid to Mark Fincham es Excavating for $140,338. Um, we did put into the budget $218,000 for this, so it is a substantial savings. In addition to that, um, the Johnny has decided that the electric work will be done in-house, which will save us about half of the $150,000 that we had put aside in the electric fund for that, although Johnny has something else he wants to spend some of that on, so we'll get to that here in just a little bit. But um, this will save us a substantial amount of money over what we set aside to finish this project. I mean, that saving money is good news, but I do have to say that 
being familiar with construction, seeing that much of a difference of price yes. for such a small project makes me really nervous. Well, you... it, it, it's actually, um, it was uh, 140000 was their bid, 171 was the next bid, okay. Okay, uh, 183 and then the 228 so I was, it's I quite the range. Were, I thought there were two. That's good. That, yeah. That's it's quite the range. Okay. So. And I know and that uh, staff is coordinating. I've already received one email from a, a business that's in the area mm -hmm. of the construction, making sure that um, at least one of the entrances to their business won't be closed. And we'll, I know that Jason is already talking to people and will be working on informing Correct. And, the and, merchants. We, and we did agree last year with the business owners that we were going to do this in sections. It will not all <coughs> be ripped up at the same time. We'll be doing what equates to a pour, which is a concrete truck full um, at a time. And uh, that way it will inconvenience the individual businesses for hopefully a week or less each time. Um, and we did, when we checked references on, on Mark Fincham, um, he has worked with Elizabeth Baxter from Greene County on other mm -hmm. projects and she says he's wonderful and goes out of his way to help. So uh, hopefully it'll, it'll go smoothly. Right. So this will be our third different contractor on sidewalks. So uh, yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? Citizens? Okay, seeing and hearing none. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. And 2016-14 uh, <coughs> by title only. Yeah, this is <coughs> authorizing payment of an invoice with a then announced certificate in the first quarter of 2016. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Patty, would you explain this one? Yes. Tremco Weatherproofing Technologies is the company that was hired to put the roof on the library. And um, unfortunately, at the end of last year, one of the things that you try to do at the end of every year, right before you, you switch over to the new budget, is you try to close any outstanding purchase orders that you don't need to remain open. Um, unfortunately, this one got accidentally closed um, before, <laughs> and it should have remained open. This is not an increase in price. This is what was remaining on the purchase order that was accidentally closed. So it's not an increase. It's not something we didn't expect. These are the two final bills on the library. So once we pay them, that will be it and it will be closed out. Um, because it's uh, more than $3,000, uh, $3, council needs to pass it then and now for us to be able to pay these two bills. Okay, any questions or comments? Seeing and hearing none, uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And would you please read the next one um, in full? Indeed. <clears throat> this is resolution 2016-15, recognizing Peace Week at Mills Lawn from March 14th through the 18th of 2016. Whereas the issue of peace embraces the deepest hopes for all, of all peoples and remains humanity's guiding inspiration, and whereas Mills Lawn Elementary School proclaims that Peace Week shall be devoted to strengthening the ideals of peace both within the school and among all members of our school community. And whereas Mills Lawn Elementary School will observe the elements of peace through a peace rally and a parade to affirm a vision of world peace and foster cooperation between individuals, organizations, and nations. And whereas Peace Week will be promoted through projects, exhibits, performances, and public awareness. Now therefore the Council for the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio hereby resolves that section one. Council for the Village of Yellow Springs hereby proclaims the week of March 14th through the 18th, 2016, Peace Week at Mills Lawn Elementary School. Section, and I'm sorry, that should be section two. This resolution shall be in full force and effect immediately upon adoption. Thank you. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Uh, this is very nice. Um, great to see the kids doing another PBL project. It seems like they're, they're never ending. So um, that's part of the yeah. Does anyone know when the actual parade is? The parade, the rally. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's March 14th. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but so. we need to follow up on that. Um, and this is a reflection of uh, you know the peace project that Mills Lawn has been working on has been ongoing for several several years, and it's been sort of a continual focus of the schools. Um, highlighting anti-bullying and, you know, again, the benefits of uh, project-based learning and uh, very exciting to see, you know, a whole week of events highlighting this. That's great. 
Um, if if you if someone Judy could I, get the, some of the specific dates, I wrote it down. I'll okay, give, I'll give and it. and maybe that would be something if we could put the whole schedule on our Facebook page. That would be great. That's great idea. I any, will I will <clears throat> get it and I will send it out to council okay. members. Thanks. Any comments or questions from council? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you to the students at Mills Lawn. They're doing great work. <laughs> Uh, next is um, the time when we hear uh, citizens' concerns. This is for items that are not on the agenda. We ask that you come to the podium and uh, state your name, and you have three minutes for comments. Okay. Okay, so hi, I'm Anna McClure, um, and this is a follow-up. Uh, I went to the HRC meeting um, on, I think it was Thursday, and brought this topic up about, um, just you were talking about peace in the village and everything. Um, this kind of goes along with that, uh, looking into possible options, other options for um, how to approach uh, policing as far as um, uh, being um, a, what I have here, what you see there is, it's called the Buddhist Cops Approach to Justice. And you have to forgive me, I'm not very good at, at uh, summarizing things, but um, basically uh, what this is, is it's um, a kind of a unique um, opportunity for our police department to get together and collaborate with um, some uh, Buddhist police officers who can train them uh, how to uh, approach things from a more a mindfulness approach. So I don't know, does anybody, can, could, could somebody just ask me a question? That might help. If yeah. you have, yes. Well, I went to the website yes. and I looked at it pretty thoroughly mm -hmm. and I wasn't, I didn't come away with it with any particular um, thing. So I, I didn't, for example, see a a training, much yeah, more training. I noticed that as well. Um, but I think what, what we have to do is email them and ask them about what their options are because I, I do know that this woman, Sherry Maples, does teach a program. So I think that you just would have to contact them and see uh, what kinds of things they can offer. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, she um, she, she switched her life around. She was a cop that was pretty much at the end of her uh, rope as far as, you know, the way policing is done now. Um, couldn't, she was about ready to quit, and she decided to go to this um, seminar where Thich Nhat Hanh, he's a very, very well-known uh, Buddhist monk, um, Zen, Zen Buddhist monk, uh, who would teach her how to approach things from a different perspective. Um, and uh, she took it and really, really took it to heart. And now she's, her mission is that she had created this Center for Mindfulness and Justice to help spread the word of being, you know, the change from the inside out. And I really felt like this was applicable, could be a great thing for our village because we're such a small town, because we have a Dharma Center here, because we have such a great diversity and, and history, a rich history. Um, even Martin Luther King himself has called Thich Nhat Hanh, an apostle of nonviolence and peace. I mean, I feel like we should be really following in, in these footsteps. We should be doing these things and, and be um, an example for the rest of, not just the community, but the rest of you know, the surrounding communities. I just, it just really it struck me as something like, wow, I can't believe we're not doing this already. Um, you're, you're at yeah. three minutes. Whatever okay. you want to do with that. So, I mean, I yeah. think this is great, Anna. It, it fits right into our goal that we just that we just agreed to about um, social about restorative justice. And um, so, I guess I would just ask for this yeah. to be included in the materials that they will be reviewing. And yeah, the, the uh, task force will be put together. Yeah. We're, we're we're starting this <clears throat> justice system task force. Yeah. Um, and Marianne and Patty had shared the article with me. I, I oh, good. and yeah. I it looked really interesting. So I appreciate you bringing oh, it to our attention. Yeah, yeah, I'm interested in your task force as well, just to hear more about it. Um, have, do you guys have information about it yet, or 
it isn't uh, right. created yet. We're going to be created. talking about okay. it. Uh, okay. I think it's a, it'll be on the agenda it'll for be the on next the agenda meeting the next just couple. to talk about the process and what well, we're looking for. And, and it's good to have multiple options, you know, just, just looking at another <clears throat> way of approaching something. We've had lots of opportunities for task force and things like that. And, and uh, I don't know. Sometimes they're great. Sometimes they don't work so well. And my opinion is the word task force has a little bit of a strange connotation to me, but I don't know, it just it, it feels kind of authoritarian in a way. I don't know, just my opinion on that, but. Thanks, Anna. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions that aren't on the agenda? Okay, we'll move on to special reports. Uh, we have the Energy Board's annual report, and I see Mr. Walkie here. Good evening. Uh, I thought about this uh, presentation. I wasn't quite sure of what the format should be, and so I, I, I went through the uh, minutes of the last year and I did a quick distillation of it. It was longer than quick, but nonetheless, that's what I ended up with. We never improved on it, so what I've got is what I hope to be a streamlined version of all that we've accomplished over the last 12 months. <coughs> um, and you've got it all on your, you've got it on your desks, um, so you've probably seen it, but I, I hope not to waste too much time. I'll just get, get you through as quick as I can and give you uh, a chance to ask any questions. Um, we began the year um, considering uh, more of the issues of solar energy, uh, including how to, uh, uh, how local solar installations should be sized and how we inventory them for uh, village use. Uh, we worked with staff uh, to develop a presentation to council uh, on the potential advantages of the community solar here in the village uh, February. We had a discussion on the need to revise our current net metering ordinance, uh, both because it's currently vague and, and not very useful, uh, difficult to implement by staff, and would potentially to add additional language to allow for uh, community solar. In March, we continued the uh, preparations for the community solar presentation. Uh, we discussed um, the dashboard project, which you are somewhat familiar with. Um, we uh, actually went ahead and made a recommendation on behalf of the energy board to that, to a grant proposal. Uh, which was ultimately not uh, supported, was not funded. Um, there's some possibility that it will be uh, reproposed, but that hasn't happened yet. Uh, in April, Marianne discussed uh, the changes to the commission uh, responsibilities. Uh, we finalized our presentation on community solar and considered uh, future projects as well. In May, we invited Carl Andre from Efficiency Smart to come discuss uh, the remaining few years on the contract, what we could hope to achieve here in the village to take advantage of, uh, of that program. Um, we realized that in terms of the easy stuff that's been done, the street lamps, the re-energizing of the Bryant Center. We've done a lot of things that were kind of the, the most obvious. Um, so it still seems that one of the things we haven't done particularly well is engage the villagers um, in, in any sort of uh, meaningful effort to reduce energy uh, consumption. We've considered, we considered that and also thought that that might be something that we could include in our discussion on the climate action plan that we're all going to be involved in near future. Uh, in June, we looked at the <coughs> structure for the electric uh, service here in the village. Um, and I know that's already done, but I think there was some pretty good discussion in the, <coughs> on the board uh, concerning the flat rate that you all approved. Uh, Thought we had some very uh, useful dialogue on that, and we came up with something that you all could use. So thank you. Uh, 
Let's see, we, at that point, uh, we were advised by staff that they had uh, looked at our portfolio and thought that a village uh, owned or village mm, solar array might be something that we could look into. And in fact, we're preparing an RFP. And so we had some discussion on that and how that might uh, dovetail with the community solar project that we've been discussing. Let's see, in July, uh, John Courtney uh, brought to our attention um, an offer from AMP to realign uh, portfolios for all AMP customers who wanted to mess around with their contracts, realign them in any way they saw fit. I think some of that, the reasoning that AMP brought that, even, even did that was because we had been grumbling to some extent about wanting to get out of some of our contracts. So. I think they did their homework and discovered that we weren't the only ones, so they made that possible. And I see you've already approved that, so uh, I thought that was a, a good opportunity for us. Um, in September, we had uh, Duart Headley from the Environmental Commission uh, discussing the Climate Action Plan. The uh, Energy Board is enthused to become a uh, part of that. We haven't gone into it specifically other than uh, Eric Johnson and I have started working on the baseline uh, with Deward. Um, we've, I would like to thank Patty for all the help she's given us. There are, as you know, two components. There's the residential commercial component and there's the governmental uh, component. And Patty is uh, facilitating our work and gathering information from the governmental end. So thank you, Patty. Um, in October, we heard uh, some concerns from Antioch regarding their rate structure after they put in their solar. They're not quite happy. We haven't made any determination or recommendation on that. Um, we discussed the flat rates that John Courtney uh, mm. uh, provided us and uh, that point uh, agreed that that would be the best thing to recommend to the village and he's done that. Uh, <coughs> in November, uh, Patty uh, reported back to us that uh, she had received most of the proposals we were going to receive on the solar array on the glass farm. Uh, so there was some discussion in that regard. We had some discussion about the uh, village-owned electric car charging stations that we own and have yet to install, and so there's some notion of um, bringing those online as, as electric cars seem to be uh, on the up and up, there's more and more uh, cited here in town, so we're hoping that at some point we can finalize a couple of spaces here in the village and get those installed. We also, on uh, advice from council, made a request to uh, include uh, $3,000 in next year's budget for the use of the energy board. Um, we don't have a whole lot of need for funds, but perhaps for covering consultation fees that we may incur, we thought it wouldn't be a bad idea to have that uh, on record. And in December, we had a very interesting discussion with a guy from Renergy, who's a local, a local fella who um, does, uh, runs a biodigesting operation in Fairborn. And uh, they take waste of all kinds and convert it into methane. And they burn the methane and create uh, electricity, a rather substantial amount of electricity, actually. And they also use the end product as fertilizer, which they then sell locally. So it's kind of a robust, interesting operation and uh, is pretty much carbon neutral. Or So it's... Where are they located? It, it's on, uh, I believe it's, they're on a, one of the pit stick farms in Fairborn. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, it's a, it doesn't take up much space. It's, you know, it sits on a half an acre or something. It's a small operation, but it's 
very interesting. Um, they currently handle half of the waste that we produce from our all plant. All of our waste now, isn't it? Yes, it's going to be all of it this year. And if it's not already, it will be soon. Good. We're changing so that contract. Our sludge. Oh, wow. Sewage. The actual reason that he wished to speak to us was he would like to sell us some of his electricity. But we, we, we're doing a lot of other things already. So, uh, But nonetheless, it was very interesting. Um, so uh, for future projects, uh, we hope to um, become more involved with climate action plan, planning, including uh, figuring out you know, how to include the community in, in all these discussions, uh, uh, setting goals for where we hope to be in 5, 10 years, 20 years, and uh, then implementing the plan. Um, we also haven't uh, quite gotten around to revising the net metering ordinance that's currently on the books and is, is uh, woefully inadequate for most of our purposes, so I think that's probably something we'll be looking at soon. Yeah. Um, finally, um, the Energy Board would like to congratulate uh, our member, Mark Ewalt, on his new position with an energy consulting firm. Uh, unfortunately, his new job is in Sacramento. Mm. So uh, we'd like to thank him very much for his thoughtful service and wish him the best out west. So we're losing a villager? We are losing a villager. That's too bad. And more importantly, an energy board member. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I just have a couple of things to just kind of add a little bit to, to Rick's very comprehensive and good report that cover, we covered a lot of ground that I had thought about, you know. Um, on the charging stations, actually, Johnny and I have been recently, like within the last week, in conversation with Deward. Um, about those and Johnny is going to try his very best to have them installed out here at the Bryan Center by May 1st. He says sometime in May, but he's going to try by May 1st because that's what Deward asked him to try to accomplish. So we have two? We mm -hmm. do have two. And we're going to put them both here? Yes. Okay. Um, and the other thing I was going to say, I just completely forgot. So if I think <laughs> of it, well, I didn't write it down like I did charging stations. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Before Rick sits down, um, do we are we going to have a planning commission report? It looks like we're not. So maybe we can just move right into the energy board um, to the so. update in the solar. I mean, I don't know if you were going to do that or Patty was going to do that. Rick is going to do that. So I just wanted to th uh, thank the energy board. I was mm -hmm. just thinking um, it's so great these uh, citizens are doing such great work. Yeah. Yes. Bravo. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, Excellent. Uh, yeah, and I would also just like to underscore, um, you know, that focus on how to engage villagers in, you know, energy efficiency. Uh, you know, I think, like you said, the climate action planning is a great strategy for doing that. And the more focus on that, the better. So. And, and in fact, that was the other thing I was going to say. I did. Um, receive a comprehensive report from um, Efficiency Smart. I had requested that after our last meeting, and I sent that out um, earlier today. I saw that. And it, it shows, um, I mean, it, they show us how many residences, how many commercial businesses were served, how many kilowatt hours, uh, the carbon emissions that were related to the saved kilowatt hours, all of that kind of thing. So um, kudos to Efficiency Smart. They said, we'll put together whatever you need. And, and it took them a week, and they got back with me. So. And is that report going to go on the website? or? Um, I, can, I can send it to, uh, to you if you want to put it on Facebook, and we can also put it on the website um, and just show folks what uh, yep. what they've saved over the last four years and I think it's I think it's important to remember as um, we have movement happening things happening in the in the business community with um, Dayton mailing service going in doing doing work on the 888 building mm -hmm. um, it you know things happening at at, uh, at millworks that that's also also some low-hanging fruit is right. those kinds of expansion projects and efficiency smart does work specifically on um, they they will put together plans I know that they've worked with Antioch College I think they worked with the Glen to put together yes. Yes. specific kinds of programs that could put money back to those organizations and businesses so for rebates and other things so it's not just the prescriptive things that are that they have on the website and that right. they do for residents there are much broader projects that hopefully right. 
will remember, I'll remember as, as a chamber person that maybe our staff will remember, um, our electric staff will remember to talk to people yeah. about. There were actually uh, like 68 perhaps residential um, things that they worked on and 238 commercial or something That's like great. that. So they, the, the commercial representative regularly comes into town. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we could, if there is some kind of a sheet or brochure that we could give we out. Have, we have so them. every time somebody comes in for a zoning mm -hmm. permit, yep. we can give them something. We have them in our okay. office, and we hand those out, and we also give them to all of the realtors okay. to give to folks who are moving or moving around or looking for new new awesome. digs or whatever. Okay, so. good. It seems like the. Um, you probably have already been talking about this, but since I haven't been a part of the discussion, the climate action plan seems like a place where the schools and the college and you know the you know young and old can get involved in thinking about behavioral changes as well that people can. We certainly hope to engage as many people as are interested and to interest those who aren't. Sounds exciting. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. So let's move on to the uh, s report on the solar array. Okay. Uh, this is sort of the culmination of our uh, <coughs> efforts to come up with a vendor for a solar project on the glass farm. So I'm just going to read what I've written. <coughs> I can't do any better. Staff and the Energy Board have concluded their review of the solar project bids received in response to our request for proposal. Of the six submissions we received, we have selected the two vendors whose proposals most closely matched our criteria. The original request for proposals asked vendors to provide costs and data for a one to two megawatt system, uh, both with and without the battery storage option. Uh, as you recall from previous discussions concerning the long-term issues uses of the glass farm, we agreed to limit the size of the array to one megawatt. We considered only systems of that size. We also researched, researched extensively on the advisability of including battery storage as a component uh, we discussed that option with each vendor during our interviews and gathered additional information online and from our energy consultant, John Courtney. It turns out that battery systems are installed primarily as an asset to enhance the stability of the regional grid. Uh, they won't increase the reliability of nor provide any backup capability of the village grid. Uh, we are recommending not including battery storage at this point. As we received the proposals, we noted that some vendors offered an option to add tracking hardware to the installation. Solar panels that track the sun's path during the day have an increased output of around 25%. While this seemed like an attractive idea, the additional costs and maintenance of a mechanical system exposed to the ice and snow of our winters becomes problematic. <coughs> we recommend a standard fixed panel array. We also considered each vendor's installation team and their ability to finance the project. Both vendors use installers with great resumes, so we had no preference for one or the other on that score. Of the two finalists, one has the ability to self-finance, meaning they can begin as soon as we can agree on a contract. The second vendor has financial backing from a highly reputable firm Based on subsequent interviews with the parties involved, we are confident in their ability as well to secure financing. Lastly, we considered the initial and long-term cost to the village ratepayers. Both vendors were able to provide reasonable cost estimates in their proposals. However, one bid will save us about one and a half million dollars over the course of 25 years of its expected operation. Uh, based on the above information, we are prepared to recommend one of these two. However, should council uh, desire to interview them separately, uh, we will withhold our recommendation, recommendation so as not to prejudice the process. So you, you've also seen the spreadsheet I provided. Mm -hmm. it has Which the I don't two understand. <laughs> it, uh, um. Mostly it, it just discussed the cost of uh, electricity that we will be paying. The only cost to us in all of this is we purchase the power coming off of that array. We have no maintenance costs. We don't pay for any of the installation. We don't, we don't have anything to do with it. We don't, we, don't, we don't even see it unless we drive down there. We just buy the electricity. 
So. And uh, that was the same with all of the proposals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the two that we've shortlisted, both of those we're keeping the recs for? Yes. Yes. And can, I don't think we discussed it before. Can we just talk about why we want to keep the recs? Why that's? Go ahead, Rick. Uh, I think there's a couple of reasons. For one, it, uh, it means we're actually sustainable. If we sell them, we can't actually claim we're using that electricity. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. It's, you know, I mean, it's legal. Um, we, we don't own the, we, we can't claim that we're sustainably powered unless we own the RECs. It's sort of, that's how that, that's how that rolls. Okay. Um, Maybe the other it would thing be thing good to explain what the RECs are. The, the REC is renewable energy a credit. renewable energy credit, which simply means that when you're generating electricity with coal, we well, don't get any credit for sustainable power. Uh, but when you when you do something sustainable, wind, solar, hydro, you, two things happen. You get you get to sell the electricity, but alongside that comes a rec, which is a, a credit for that for having created that energy. It can stay with the energy and go to whoever uses it, or it can be sold to somebody else and they can claim they use it. So it's an actual asset that's been ascribed to that power being generated that somebody else can own. So. It was created so that power um, generators could purchase it if they didn't have the ability to meet some of the mandates that they, might, they, that they needed to have in their own portfolios to generate sustainable power. They could buy the credit from other places so that it would look good on there. <clears throat> Is it possible down the road if, if our portfolio starts to look even, even greener than it does now and we might it might be financially advantageous to sell those recs. Can we decide to do that at a later time? Yes, they're, they're, it's, a, it's a commodity and you can sell them whenever you want to anybody who wishes. Uh, In fact, the village has been selling their recs and, and recently Energy Board um, thought to recommend to not sell recs anymore because it doesn't at this point bring that much money in but and we also don't get to you can claim your portfolio is green but you can't it's not official mm -hmm. right. because even though you're buying from green sources you don't own those sources at that point so um the 15 was the last year i think that we were selling recs so right now we own all of our recs off of our amp portfolio mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. does owning the recs facilitate the community solar piece Owning the, uh, I think owning the RECs is advantageous when you go to say perhaps look for a grant to buy the solar array okay. at the end of the term. Um, in the meantime, you can always sell them and buy a generic REC off of the market, but owning your own RECs is advantageous not only because your portfolio is truly green at that point, but because if you decide you want to apply for a grant, it is truly advantageous to own your RECs. That, that would have been the other thing I would have mentioned is that there's some possibility that it will enhance any grant applications that the village uh, proposes mm -hmm. uh, for any energy use. If we own our own RECs, um, it, it looks good. So who, who would be supervising? Since, since we're really not involved in the ownership of this array, it's going on our property. So who's supervising? What's our role in that? And how much do we have to say about the quality of the installation and how they're, you know, are, are, they, are they level across a certain, you know, can you look out and see them, see the panels being level or are, do we have the ability to put any sort of installation uh, requirements on these contractors? I'm sure that could be that's part of the negotiation for any contract we enter. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I'm going to throw out the caveat that you could probably put any restriction on them that you could on any other zoning. I mean, it has to, it'll have to go. And before this will planning. go before before planning yeah, commission I mean, and that's, things like that's, fences, fence materials, yes. and all those kinds of things will yeah. be determined. Okay. Right. Yeah, it's it's a, it's going to be a conditional use. It'll have to go before. Uh, the planning commission and, and be approved as a conditional use. So. Do we need to, it seems like, is, is, is that the next step? Should this go before planning commission or will the contractor be the one that has to come the contractor for the conditional will be, use? Yeah, the okay. contractor will be the one that has to come for the conditional use. The, the next step would essentially to be for council to decide do you want these last two vendors to come and present before you themselves 
or would you like the Energy Board to make um, an actual recommendation on awarding a contract to a particular vendor? Can I ask one more question? Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned that at least one of the firms could, you know, be ready to build right away. They self-finance. So, I mean, when would the building start? I mean, could they, it they're start probably now? Both, or? They're probably both interested in getting it into the ground this yes. calendar year. That would, that would, that's in their that would be in their best interest right. and of course ours but okay. so I, I wouldn't it would, you know the contract has hasn't been negotiated so there's that piece and then they would have to go out and get can you build solar arrays any time of the year or mm. I, I, I would but they yeah. probably don't want it they probably want it up and running before the weather turns mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah they both have the goal uh, all of the firms had the goal of completing it by the end of this year well before the end of the year so patty can you lay out which i i don't know that i need to see a presentation i don't know how how you all feel if you want to see both of these folks come in um i mean it's almost in some respects this the same as with the water plant although a bit smaller than that that a group of people really have spent the time investigating it and I'm not sure that in the short amount of time of the presentation that we'll be able to offer much. Well, I, I was at the, I think all of the <coughs> Energy Board meetings where the presentations were made by the companies as well as the uh, deliberation by the Energy Board and staff and the expertise that exists between the staff and the Energy Board is is in a different category than I think any of the uh, right. council have and I would feel very comfortable having witnessed that for the staff and the energy board I mean as long as there's an alignment mm -hmm. between staff and the energy board to take their recommendations. So Patty could you kind of go through the process I mean what do you see as the timetable here uh, if that's the case if 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 council if Rick were to make a recommendation and council were to approve that we would bring a resolution um, I would I would contact that vendor start working on a contract um, once we have most of that hammered out I would bring it back to council for a resolution and then they could drop their plans and present it to the Energy Board um, I would say that the resolution would come before council in April um, perhaps go before Energy Board in May and they would start construction. I mean, yeah. Well, but then and we've got planning. planning in the middle. Or I meant planning. planning. Yeah. I meant planning, not Energy Board. Okay. Right, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's a conditional use hearing. So as soon as they say they're ready for the plans, we give the, is it 10 days to two weeks notice for a conditional, for a conditional use hearing? And Council, are we? I, I agree with Mary Ann. Ready uh, for this? That, yeah, that we should just go forward. Okay. I think I generally agree. I, I guess I just, you know, I feel like with other presentations we have, um, you know, when we've gotten to the final group, we've given an opportunity, not that citizens have taken advantage of it, mm -hmm. to hear the presentation and ask mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the only thing that's in my mind doesn't well, mean I disagree but and the only thing I would want to point out Brian is that you have to remember that the information that they would present to you would be business confidential until that contract is signed so you would have to have those in executive session so mm -hmm. having them with it publicly is it, you know the public would not be able to be involved because mm -hmm. of the business confidential nature of the it's a little bit different um, from most mm -hmm. other contracts that we that we let I mean Energy Board had to go into executive session for all of their meetings mm -hmm. and so. I consider this somewhat of a commodity that more of a commodity than a water plant that yeah, I don't know that there's as many decisions to be made as many things to consider and I think the things to consider are how it's being financed and you know how that how the financing looks at the end and that's something that you all are considering anyway mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, I don't know, what are we, what are you saying about this recommendation? Is he, well, if, is if, he going to do it right now? And yes, I think he's ready to actually do We're it. ready to recommend one of the two vendors that we uh, discussed this evening. Have at it. Uh, well, uh, and we all agreed uh, that uh, the Atlas Power and Energy uh, firm was uh, the one that we felt was going to deliver us the best product for the best price. So and that's... And Atlas is financed we by SpearPoint. Yeah. And SpearPoint is doing a lot of work with yeah. them currently in the state of Ohio. So we had a, a good sensation there. 
And can you highlight the reasons why you're making that recommendation? Uh, just quickly, uh, I think the bottom line was they're <coughs> going to offer us a flat rate option, which means that for 25 years we will be paying the exact same amount for all the energy we purchase from that. All the other um, vendors had an escalator of anywhere from 2 to 3 percent per year uh, <coughs> price increase. For the for the length of the term, so we thought that uh, when we when we did the calculations, we figured that would save the ratepayers in the village about a million and a half dollars over the term of the of the first 25 years. Uh, because by and large, as Karen mentioned, it's commodity. They're all putting in basically the same thing. They're, they'll all look identical. They'll all all work the same. So really. You know, the, the difference is going to be is, uh, you know, what benefit do we derive from it? We derive the same benefit at, at, a, at a reduced cost with Atlas, and that was basically what drove that, as well as their ability to get financing. Uh, that seems a positive. Well, and also just to mention, John Courtney was involved in these discussions, and um, I think he. Uh, brought information that made us all feel very comfortable. And, and so he's familiar yes. with these folks. Oh, he yeah. knows. And, yeah. and has Melissa looked at the financing? I mean, is that something that she's looked at at all, or no, is that necessary? It's, it no. doesn't, it it's doesn't not, affect us in any yeah. way. Okay. It's simply purchasing the power. Right. Okay. Yeah. So next step at the next meeting, you'll have a resolution? Um, well, the contract you? needs to be attached to the resolution, so the next step is that I will contact uh, Sid Tawana at Atlas and uh, start working on a contract with him. And council so, is agreeable. I was going to say, should we make a motion to yeah. accept the recommendation? Why don't you go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> make a motion to accept the recommendation uh, uh, from the Energy Board uh, <coughs> regarding uh, the Glass Farm Solar Insta installation um, with the vendor being Atlas Power and Energy. Energy. Atlas Power and Energy. I'll second that. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <clears throat> Opposed. Okay. Jerry, can, do you want to do you want to make a few comments? I mean, uh, uh, I I just all along I just did not feel that the glass farm was the right place to put the solar array. That's you know, I just felt we had a, there were better places to put it. So that's that's why. Well, okay, I, I want to say, I, I want to clarify, I think that there are better places to put it myself. So I'm, because I, because I think that land is, is, I don't like green fields, using green fields for something like that. But that's, I'm, I'm basing it on what staff has had to say related to location and cost of installation. That's why I'm supporting it at Glass Farm. I would much rather see it someplace else that would be more visible and that, that um, wouldn't be on land that's so valuable. But I think that the, that the difficulties with looking at those properties, there's a lot of difficulties in looking at those properties. We're talking about one, Vernet, which, which we don't know when it would be available for any kind of development. And the other is a Center for Business and Education. And um, that land is equally valuable. So I. I just want to clarify. I, I don't mean to get into something, but I would I would like to see it on a different location. Yeah, I would like to see it in a different location. I can't I can't disagree with that. Yeah. So. Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot, Rick. Thanks, you can thank you. take you. a vacation thank now. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. Next on the agenda is a levy update, and on your table um, you'll see a piece that is. Um, was developed by um, Melissa. I had some input. Um, Brian also had some input because he had actually um, been involved in some presentations where there were questions. And um, I think that, that um, uh, 
those questions resulted in, in wanting to include some information. A little bit more detail related to the actual numbers. Um, probably most of you have seen the piece that went into the utility bills that was um, pretty general, general about the amount of money of the levy and where the money goes. Um, but we heard a lot of feedback that people wanted to see more specifics in terms of actual dollars and actual dollars that are going into particular um, different items, different um, where, where we're allocating our general fund money. So um, we thought that this um, was pretty explanatory. Um, it is being mailed out, Judy. When is it going out? It should go out Thursday or Friday of this week. Well, if it doesn't, then we might as well not send it. Well, Saturday <laughs> would be the latest. I mean, it's going to arrive in households Friday, Saturday, Monday at the absolute latest. And we're waiting on a second proof to come back. Wasn't in yet tonight. Should be in tomorrow morning. Okay. We can get going. Okay. So are they all? Okay. I'll go down and help fold them if they need oh, no. <laughs> there will be a machine to do that. Yeah. I know. I just, <laughs> bring you some I just want the I just want them out. So um, well I guess we've got another proof. Any any comments or questions? Or, you know, I wonder it, if we should have some can we have them at the handed out somewhere at the um, probably not Midwest? You can, I, I think you can. You just can't it's gotta be so many feet away. Oh really? Yeah. Hmm. Let's look at that what might we can be do. useful. Hmm. And we definitely need to get this Just newest to copy, sure people around, you know, can. here in as many places on the on the Facebook page, on the website, um, as many places as possible. And we we have seen some um, a couple of nice letters to the editor um, supporting the levy at the last me or last week in the paper, and I expect that there will be more this week in the paper. So. Um, I think um, hopefully the citizens um, agree and will support the levy. Yeah, we would be allowed to hand out. We're the, we the elected people. Why don't you, Judy, look into what we? Yeah, we can't. <laughs> you, we can't be paying staff to do it. But you, um, you can hand them. Out. I thought you were talking about at the polling place, but certainly. I am talking about the polling place. Okay. So. There's, well, a certain as feet, a, there's a certain amount of feet. Why don't you, can yes, you look into I'm that almost and let us know? Can. As a candidate, I know we were able to do that. We had to stay a certain distance from. Yeah, I'm not sure if it would be outside or even it was standing outside. in the lobby. It, was it has to be outside. It had to be outside. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Any other questions? Um, next on the agenda is council retreat planning. Um, I think Judy has all of, has made all of the plans as far as for housing, where we're going to do it, Antioch University Midwest. Um, do we know what room, Judy? We do, and I keep forgetting the darn okay. room number, but it's... So we'll know then. It's on the first floor, I assume. The one where the bikini room is And um, lunch, so we have lunch and maybe some <coughs> coffee and... Absolutely. Great, okay. Um, and I just threw together, this is a compilation kind of going through the last <coughs> couple of, of um, retreat agendas. I just pulled a few things out. Um, we really hadn't talked about it much, so I just wanted to get something down on paper to get uh, to get council response and reaction to. Um, I had a couple of things. Um, one we talked about was the goals, um, and I was thinking kind of of trying to think about a, a timeline for the year. I don't know okay. if that's exactly <coughs> what you were thinking. Um, and then the second, uh, uh, another thought I've had, and I haven't brought it up before, so I don't know if it would fit or if people are interested, but um, I uh, best practices in, ach in achieving uh, workforce diversity, like hiring practices. I, I thought for the, that the village, you know, that's been a goal, um, you know, being a place of opportunity for diverse people and something that maybe we as a, uh, you know, given our, our own hiring practices is mm -hmm. what I started to think about if we wanted to just look at that. So I don't know if that's the place to do it or. Well, the first one, you know, they would definitely, pro I will do, pro we'll say project management slash timeline mm -hmm. related to 2016 goals. Mm -hmm. um, Chris, you had requested specific time too, right? Uh, well, there's an issue we want to talk about CDE. Okay, at the retreat? Yes. 
Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's a piece of, it's a part of the economic development. Okay. Okay, um, good. Yeah, that's a good idea. So then let's say, um, so that's maybe, do you think that that's going to take an hour? Well, I, no, let's, I, I think it's a, it's a 15 minute discussion just to kind of figure out where we are and then get some sense of what we want to do moving forward. I, I think that's going to be a longer discussion than a yeah, 15 minutes. Well, you're probably right, but there's a lot of things <laughs> on the agenda too. And yeah, I, I mean, I mean, we might want to give it an hour. And, uh, right. Well, we've got, we've got two hours, really two hours for the project management timeline. We'll probably take a, a break in there somewhere. So, or for the 2016 goals discussion, you know, maybe we can get um, your, the discussion of hiring practices. I mean, if, if there's not time for it here, that could be, happen some other place. Yeah, also. I mean, it's, it's, since it isn't something we've talked about, I mean, yeah. maybe you could bring... Maybe that is something we could work into um, another so a a regular meeting. Just a yeah. Discussion. Okay. Anything else that anybody would like to add or change? Well, just given what we're talking about, I don't, is lunch going to be a working lunch or? Probably. No. Uh, I don't know. I think we'll it probably was, need a little bit of a break, but yeah, we worked through lunch last week last year. So. <laughs> So does everything else look okay? Okay. So Judy, just make it's really that just that one change, and so cool. Okay. And then just make sure we know, you know, just to get us out the final communication of exactly where the meeting is. Yes. And yes. Great. Uh, new business, um, and I see that Nick is here. Um, another project um, with. Glenn Helen um, sounds interesting. I will invite Nick to the podium. <clears throat> Hello, all. Nick Budas, Yellow Springs Villager, and today wearing my hat of uh, Glenn Helen Association Executive Director. <coughs> so, the, the Cliff Notes version of what brings me here today is that the uh, Glen Helen Association is interested in acquiring the eastern tract of the Sutton Farm. Um, we believe that we would be able to bring uh, state funds to the village to facilitate this transfer. Uh, and we believe that the transfer of the property would be in the best interest of the people of Yellow Springs uh, and be an important step for the health of Glen Helen. Um, Looking at, at the, the management of the Glen, uh, one of the, the great challenges that we face is that it's long and narrow, um, about four miles long, rarely more than a half a mile wide. Uh, and much of the watersheds of uh, Birch Creek, the Yellow Springs Creek, the Little Miami are outside of the Glen. <laughs> um, when you look at the ability of the Glen to, to filter water, to provide habitat for plants and animals, uh, we're limited because of the shape of the preserve. So starting a couple of years ago, the Glen Helen Association uh, took the strategic step to look beyond the current boundaries of the Glen, uh, to work with uh, neighboring landowners whose lands were, were unprotected, to uh, encourage them to place conservation easements, working with the Tecumseh Land Trust, um, and to acquire ecologically important lands uh, when the opportunity arose. Uh, we've done that to date with uh, the uh, uh, former Girl Scout camp, Camp Green, uh, for which the, the village was able to provide a letter of support. Uh, we did that uh, just uh, last fall uh, with the Barbara and David Case Woods, uh, which uh, was a former Sutton farm uh, right on 343, just, uh, just south of the village property. The Sutton farm has been owned by the village since 1966, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a uh, large L-shaped parcel. The map <coughs> before you is approximately 106 acres. Um, I gave you a couple of looks at it in that map, uh, but if I could direct your attention to the one with my beautifully hand-drawn colored diagrams on it. Um, the orange box is about a 15-acre parcel, an agricultural tract. That's at the west edge, so it actually bumps all the way up to uh, US Route 68. Uh, in between the orange and the pink, or uh, uh, yellow depending on how well my uh, copier uh, 
made those is a uh, is an uncolorized tract. That's the village maintenance yard, uh, and then you see uh, in a, a pink outline. That's the eastern section that we're um, we're interested in. Now, the the reason that those two uh, areas are enclosed is that both of those were placed under conservation easement by the village uh, in 1995. So those are the both the uh, the orange and the pink lands. Uh, the village had already decided to to permanently protect those uh, as green space. So. Why do we think it's uh, a desirable and important property to include in Glen Helen? Um, it is the, the first line of defense uh, in terms of enhancing and protecting water quality of Birch Creek. Uh, and it might be helpful to look at now the, uh, the photograph map. A and one of the things that I'd like to stress from looking at that photograph map, and I apologize that one's oriented landscape and one's oriented portrait. Um, North of the village property, you enter a landscape that's dominated by agriculture, where uh, most of the riparian coverage for Birch Creek is um, uh, within agricultural lands that have minimal buffer zones. There's a couple exceptions to that, but generally, if you look uh, at uh, what Birch Creek uh, travels through before it gets to the Sutton Farm, there aren't many opportunities for that filtration that we're counting on. And both forks of the Yellow Springs Creek uh, come through this eastern section. That's my blue line. Uh, it essentially, the uh, Birch Creek essentially trisects that eastern section of, uh, of the Sutton Farm. Within that area, out of curiosity, how many of you have spent any time on, on this section of the farm? Once. Wonderful. Well, what I, what I can tell you is that um, uh, you've got wetlands along the creek, uh, skunk cabbage abounds in places this time of year. Uh, there are several surprisingly large oak trees in there. Somebody for hundreds of years made the decision not to cut those. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's a red oak that is larger than anything in Glen Helen. There's a bur oak that's larger than anything that remains in Glen Helen. There, there are several white oaks that are easily over 200 years old that are within this, the land that the village has been conserving for the past 50 years. Um, it's an area of high ecological potential, but it's also only partially realized. Um, the, uh, the 1995 easement codified its use as green space, but did little to ensure that the land would be managed in a way that maximizes its ecological values. Um, the buffer between the stream and the agricultural fields is in places as narrow as 50 to 75 feet. Um, a good way to look at that would be on um, um, the, uh, the survey map. Um, uh, and uh, it's going to take a little bit of back and forth, but contrasting where you're seeing the stream with where you're seeing the agricultural lands on the, fo on the photographic map. In the Glen, we strive for at least a 200-foot riparian buffer zone. Uh, and there are qualified studies from the Yale School of Forestry and other places that say until you get up over 300 feet of buffer zone, you're not providing habitat for uh, species like cerulean war warbler, which we see in the Glen, uh, red fox, which we see in the Glen. Uh, over 300 feet is necessary for, uh, for filtering out uh, airborne pesticides. Uh, so having a, a buffer zone that's 50 to 75 feet misses an opportunity. Uh, the area is also heavily invaded by non-native uh, species, uh, euonymus, privet, honeysuckle, garlic mustard, oriental bittersweet. If we're able to acquire those lands, I believe that we'd be able to honor and further uh, the village's commitment to seeing the property protected as green space. Um, we would be able to remove the invasive species that are there uh, to reforest the agricultural area with native trees uh, and shrub shrubs um, to maximize the ability of that land uh, to serve as filters for the remainder of the Glen, the land that we all visit and know and love. Um, we would seek funds from uh, the Clean Ohio Conservation Fund to purchase this property from the village. Uh, Clean Ohio is able to fund a sales price up to three quarters of the appraised value uh, of the property. Uh, and I should say that this is somewhat uh, time constrained. 
uh, there's a limited time window to pursue Clean Ohio funding. Uh, we don't know the extent of funds beyond the present window, uh, but appli the application is due uh, July 1st. Happy to entertain any questions that you might have. Mm. Um, Patty, oh, go ahead. Well, how would you, would you see this area being used at all? I mean, would there be paths at all for people, or is it more like a preserve? I, I would see this area, it would be very hard for us to use this area uh, in, in any meaningful public use, partly because of the language of the existing conservation easement, uh, which, for example, uh, precludes uh, development of even a rudimentary parking area. Um, uh, so uh, I think of this area as primarily a preserve, a filter, an area that's left intact uh, and, uh, you know, focus the, the public visitation in the Glen in the areas where we're already able to accommodate it. Uh, we don't need a little parcel that has a trail wiggling back and forth. And you are including the, the yellow section too? <clears throat> Uh, so let me be clear about that. I'm just talking about the uh, the pink section. The pink section there. Okay. Uh, I just included the yellow to, to illustrate that's. Uh, it gives you a better image of the overall village parcel, uh, and to note that that's where the easement was. I kind of knew it was going to be a little bit confusing as I was drawing it. And, and I'd like to hear. Can well, did staff. you say oh. something about what the easement is on the orange parcel? What so the orange and the pink the have the same uh, conservation easement. I only have the single yeah. copy f the, it, for myself here. Yeah, um, it, it would actually have to be um, the part that Nick is talking about. The Glen acquiring would actually have to be separated in the easement documents, um, according to uh, Krista McGaw. Um, it would actually have to be, the easement would have to be uh, amended or, or whatever legal. Um. Mm -hmm. Ordinarily, we wouldn't have that option, but for whatever reason, in adopting this easement, uh, the easement was done in two separate sections, right. which creates the, the legal capacity of the land trust to, um, to separate them out. So the, uh, the easement uh, that the village signed uh, for these two parcels would stay intact, uh, but the, um, the pink parcel would also get a second layer of protection, which would be coming from Clean Ohio. Uh, so let's hear from staff. Um, there are three things that I, I would like to point out that have kind of come up during the discussions that Nick and I have had uh, about this. Um, the first one is that um, the flatters, and I see Sharon sitting in the back, uh, um, they would no longer be able to farm on this portion. Um, and Nick and I talked and he feels that um, they, we can go ahead and sign a lease with the Flatters because Chris is actually working on all three of their leases right now. We need to renew those. We can sign a lease with them uh, through 2017. Um, and if the grant is awarded, then they would be allowed to farm through 2017, but not after that. If the grant isn't awarded, obviously, we could renew their lease. Um, the second thing that Nick and I have talked about is the potential for putting a fence around Sutton Farm because I do have a, a few concerns about security and perhaps increased usage if it becomes part of the Glen Preserve eventually and, and folks going around and uh, you know walking through it. And, and the third thing is that potentially there could be hunting and I don't know that Nick has or hasn't gotten that far in thinking, but it is something that we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, so my concern that perhaps the increased foot traffic mm -hmm. would increase people coming on to our part of Sutton Farm and, and the desire to have that secured. So I asked Nick to look into whether or not a, a fence around the remaining portion where we have our equipment and our buildings mm -hmm. could be erected as part of the grant, and he said he believes that it can. Uh, sure. The, um Clean Ohio would consider a fence on that line to be an eligible expense. Uh, so, but it'd uh, only be on that one line. On that one line. So then we would have to continue the fence the rest of the way around. So would you would you would he put would. it around essentially fill in the whole yeah three sides the whole three would sides would be our responsibility um, if we chose. Now you would you know obviously have a couple years to do that most likely because the flatters are still going to be farming it and probably not too many people walking back there um, until that ceases. Is, is hunting allowed now? 
Uh, there is uh, hunting on part of it right now, yes. So are you saying that it would be potentially more vulnerable to hunting? Uh, right now the, the hunting is limited to village employees okay. oh. because of liability issues. And, and the Glen allows hunting? Uh, there's no hunting in the Glen no, as a whole. Uh, when <clears throat> uh, the Glen Helen Association uh, acquired uh, Camp Green and um, uh, the Case Woods, uh, the, uh, the applications are viewed more favorably if you, if you allow uh, active management via hunting and fishing. Uh, so uh, both of those were created, listed as, as opportunities. Uh, from, uh, from a land management's perspective, uh, I, th I think uh, most people would argue it would be, uh, be healthy for the village deer population to have uh, as many hopper hunting opportunities as possible. Uh, the conservation easement uh, prohibits any uh, hunting in the riparian buffer zone on the land. Um, the, the, uh, the, co the conservation easement already in place. So, so we do need to move relatively quickly on this. Um, the the riparian buffer is the is the green around the streams. Uh, it, so, it's a specific the uh, the riparian buffer is defined particularly within the conservation within the existing conservation easement. So that area, as it's defined within this conservation easement, does not allow. Um, um, it uh, does not allow hunting. Uh, if we increased the riparian area, presumably, uh, well, we'd need a we'd need a legal opinion on that. But we'd want to make sure if you know if you double the riparian area, you're not also doubling the area where hunting would not be allowed. Right. It's a, it's defined as a certain number of feet in the in the e in the conservation easement. Yeah. Um, just looking at it, there uh, it's 50 feet wide right. in this document. Um, and, and with regards to the, the question of the fence, I, I do think that that's something that the, uh, the village would need to, uh, uh, to consider. I don't see this as being a property that would uh, create the, if you will, attractive nuisance challenges that we have in the rest of the Glen. It's, it's not really walking distance from anywhere. There's no place to park. Uh, there's no trail system. Uh, um, so I don't, I don't think it creates the vector uh, for vandalism that you likely see in, in other parts of the preserve. Um, uh, so, so there's that. And then regarding the existing farming use, I, I want to say it, it, it appears uh, from the time that I've spent on the farm that, that uh, uh, your, your uh, farm leasey is doing uh, everything that you've asked them to do in terms of, in terms of stewarding the land. Uh, and, and my coming forward today has, has got nothing to do with questioning uh, that role more with, uh, with maximizing an opportunity to get meaningful habitat protection out of, out of village green space. Mrs. Flatter, would you like to make a comment? We'll, we'll ask you to come up here just so everybody can hear you. You don't have to. You don't have to, <laughs> but I just wanted to give you an opportunity. Well, Thank you. Uh, okay, so Patty, would you, or Nick, whoever, can lay out the steps of what we need to do schedule-wise and? Um, well, I think, I think this is something the Village uh, Council needs to dwell on. If we're going to proceed, I would need at least a couple of months uh, between uh, a Village uh, uh, resolution of authorization uh, and the, uh, the deadline for application at the beginning of July. Council, are we, are we disposed to support this? Do we have comments, other comments, questions? Well, I, I guess I have a comment. I, I heard what Nick, Nick has been saying, uh, but I don't, uh, you know, other than the land becoming part of the Glen the elimination of farming, um, I, I, I don't see where we, the village, will benefit from from giving up this land. Uh, you know, unless you know, I 
I, I didn't hear anything. You know. Do, do we have a financial I, analysis to know how much we're we're getting on the lease and how much we're paying in taxes? Um, we don't at this point because the land hasn't been appraised. I, I can tell you that the the lease is what seven hundred and eighty one acres at seventy one dollars an acre. Seven hundred eighty one dollars. Seven hundred eighty one dollars and seventy one acres. That's Total. Piece of it. Okay. Right, no, we're just talking strictly Correct. about that one. Right. Correct. And then um, the taxes are based on what we make from the lease. So I, I would suggest, um, since this is, I don't know that the public knows about this at all, um, that we make a decision at the next meeting. Well, I, what I would or, like to do is maybe have some financial, have Patty bring yeah. the, the financials. I would assume that the flatters might want to continue on that small parcel to farm the small parcel. It, that's an entirely separate lease. It would not, yeah, it wouldn't be. Right. So, yeah. I mean, so that, that can but, still be farmed. Um, I do have a question, though, Nick, that, I, that occurred to me. You said that the grant would be uh, up to three quarters of the appraised value. Mm -hmm. Would the additional quarter or whatever the remainder be, would that be made up by other Glen Helen funds? Uh, we don't have the capacity to bring cash to this project. Um, uh, we would look for the village to absorb that as a donated value. I think that uh, just on first hearing of the idea, uh, the va what it gives to the village, well, we'll get a little money. Uh, More than a little. We'll, yeah, yeah uh, we, and we'll lose a little money. <laughs> so, but I mean, we'll gain more than we'll lose probably at least in, in a shorter period. Um, and we gained the stewardship of the Glen um, that, you know, seems a reasonable, you know, uh, that the Glen would like to have that for the, for the health of the Glen, which we all benefit from. But I, but like I say, you know, you know, coming back with a little more information seems like a good idea. I, I mean, I guess I would like to ask that this, and I know your board, I know I've asked you this, so, so you have full board support. Your board has made this decision to go forward? Uh, yes, uh, the Glen Helm Association Board authorized me to, to be in <coughs> front of you today and, and uh, uh, pending uh, uh, you know, council approval to uh, uh, generate an application to the Clean Ohio Conservation Fund. Um, to, to answer uh, Jerry's question, I think the, the things that the village gets uh, out of this are um, uh, uh, furthering a village interest to maintain the property as green space. Um, so the village doesn't lose that. Um, uh, to uh, sale of a property that's not a significant revenue source for the village. Uh, and three, allowing us to do the work of, of improving the health of the, the streams that provide the water source for the village of Yellow Springs. Yeah, yeah, but, it does run through yeah, our, but, our but, you know, But I, I see also in, in your uh, color caption, you know, you, you've got the small section, but you've got section outside that you don't control. And, and from, if, if I'm hearing you correctly, then apparently uh, something is contaminating the water in this area, okay? And if we're only farming, then that says farming has to be contaminated. Uh, Unless you can uh, show, me, show me something else that, you know, is contaminating that you would be able to control because, you know, the water's coming in from, you know, further than just these acres sure um, I, I guess the the simple way to to put that is to say you're absolutely right it's unrealistic to say that we're going to have um, um, a hundred percent conservation of every riparian uh, acre uh, in the birch and Yellow Springs Creek corridors um, it is I think reasonable for us to look at when there are opportunities what are the things that we can do with the available lands to make a difference in terms of water quality? And, and there's, there's good documentation uh, about uh, the ability of protected lands uh, to, uh, to filter water. Uh, so I think uh, I wouldn't put ourselves in the position of saying that 
because we're not protecting one piece of land, we shouldn't protect this one. You know what I would suggest is uh, if you could do a written, maybe you already have a written report, um, you know, that you could submit. Sure. Right. I mean, I would, I would like to, I would like, you know, and I assume it will be in the paper this week or next, um, at least a small report. You know, maybe you could write a letter to the editor. You know, I mean, this is, this is us making a big decision, but it's the request of the Glen. So I guess I would ask the Glen to take the step of talking to the community about this because it's it's a village asset mm -hmm. but I believe that that the Glen and the community will be the beneficiary and so rather than us try to tell that story I think it would be good for the Glen to do that happily done right. Patty how long would it take to get an <clears throat> appraisal um, we could probably get it done within three weeks four weeks it depends on how busy the appraisers are when you call them commercial appraisers I, w I wouldn't think it would take more than a month. Um, but so not by the next meeting. Oh, um, possibly, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't bank on it because I don't know that we would. Would that be your step? Is that would that be something you would do? Is get the appraisal as quickly as possible, or wait till council? Well, you're going to spend. Us? You're going to spend money on the appraisal. So if if you choose not to do it, then you've <clears> wasted the money on the appraisal. But, I don't um, think it's a waste. I mean, we've been talking about, you know, what we're going to do with village assets. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would like us to get the appraisal as soon as possible. Okay. So. I will work on it. And if I can have it by the next meeting, we will. Um, the appraisal, uh, assuming it's done by uh, a appraiser or appraisal firm that is uh, registered with the state of Ohio would be a Clean Ohio eligible I'll, yeah, I'll talk. I'll talk to Krista. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? It would be a reimbursed, oh. is that what you were saying, that that right. cost would be reimbursed okay. if we went forward with okay. it. Uh -huh. Right, right. Anything and, else, Nick, or any well, council? Just, and so I, I know a little bit about Clean Ohio Fund, but is it 20, it's 75 percent, does it, Break out each of those expenses so uh, for right. it's, for it's the cumulative project cost. Cumulative. Okay. Um, so um, the mm -hmm. the the cost to split this part of the easement off would be included, <coughs> and the cost for the appraisal could be included. Well, that's actually one one area of distinction. I don't expect that that, that the, the the one thing that I think would would uh, reasonably hit the the Glen Helen Association budget is. Uh, that the Tecumseh Land Trust would need a new easement stewardship fee. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not a uh, Clean Ohio eligible expense, and, oh. and, and that's something that we would that uh, be prepared me. to take on. Okay. Huh. Mm -hmm. That surprises me a little bit. You would think it would be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, any other questions? Thanks a lot, Nick. Thank you. And Thank you. Thank you. It sounds like uh, maybe you'll be at our next meeting, yeah. or at least information will be. Uh, manager's report um, a couple of the things in my report we've already covered um, I'm gonna skip on down uh, to the uh, planning and zoning uh, portion of my report um, currently the village doesn't require property owners to cut their grass prior to July 1 and I believe that that uh, regulation was put in place because um, of the nesting habitat of some uh, of, of, of nature's creatures. Um, some of them lay eggs, some of them uh, birth their young in, in nests. And the problem that we have is that we also get complaints from adjoining properties who do cut their grass um, that snakes, rodents, and other creatures from the high grass areas are coming onto to properties of people who are cutting their grass. Um, so we start getting calls as soon as the grass gets high enough to, to allow that to happen. And so uh, there have been, there's been discussion amongst staff as to whether council, uh, we should ask council to consider changing that date. So this is what we're asking is if council will consider changing the date, even, even if you change it just to June 1st. Um, with these warmer springs, warmer wetter springs, this grass gets high faster. Some of these properties are empty lots and, and people don't cut them until we basically force them to cut them. Um, so the request of staff is that council, th you, and no decision obviously has to be made tonight, but 
um, if council would consider changing that to an earlier date and we certainly can take input from from some of the citizens on it um, but we do get quite a few calls from residents who are saying you know there's a there's an empty lot or even my neighbor doesn't cut his grass and uh, the animals are coming over we last year we had numerous complaints from the children's center because there was an abandoned lot uh, right next to them that snakes and and other rodents were coming out and, and getting into the playground um, so this is the kind of call that we get on a regular basis um, up until we start making people cut their grass and why does this come to council and not planning commission um, well it it's going to have to eventually be brought to um, planning commission but I thought I would start with council to see if they were even supportive of it um, we can certainly put it on planning commission's agenda um, but it's more of a property maintenance thing well I will say I mean my thing. initial thought is that this sounds like something that should be investigated but I guess I'd like to know did, I'm sorry Mr. Yusuf. I, I, I do think this is something that should be explored because um, I, I mean I've heard these problems for the two years I've been mm -hmm. on council but I guess I'd want it to be more uh, analyzed in depth by mm -hmm. right. planning commission and and the possibility you know, environmental commission? yes I, I'd like the environmental I mean the environmental commission is already discussing an ordinance that Ooh. would allow more naturalization mm -hmm. in yards so I and yeah. that's that did concern me so it seems like we could have two things that are kind of butting heads I do. yes <laughs> so I would yeah I, I think what Duart is proposing about naturalized areas is is a little bit different than than the current ordinance but they could be they could work together so let's yeah I think at this point it probably makes more sense for Environmental Commission because I think I don't know if the ordinance came again since it's a property maintenance issue right it's probably more for council than it is for Planning Commission right I would think um, I mean would it even would it go to planning commission or need to it depends on how the original ordinance was passed but I don't, I don't know that it would or wouldn't if, if it's not part of the code it doesn't no, I, right no I, it's a, one of those nuisance ordinances it's not part of the zoning code so okay no, it's separate. so I would there's lots of skunks in my neighborhood and <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean I, I don't think, think it's related to high grass <laughs> So I would I, I think that it makes sense. I agree with staff's concerns, especially if we are getting concerns from citizens. I think we need to address it. Environmental Commission um, seems like the place to start. So okay, we we don't have a lot of time though. Right. So exactly. Um, at the last meeting, we did have a request from Antioch College for forgiveness on the pool fill again this year. They have withdrawn that request. Um, they have decided that they are not going to drain the pool this year they're gonna wait until next year and then I do have one additional item um, Johnny came to me today and we have we have 15 electric poles in the village that are in bad shape and the they require first of all they require five people trained in three three phase electric to change them out safely and we don't have all the safety equipment some of it is due to locations some of it is due to the fact that it's three phase and we have two guys that are trained in three phase um, so these 15 poles we would need to hire a contractor to do um, Johnny has two prices one from Davis and Pickering for ninety five thousand dollars and one from high tech at forty five thousand dollars and if you remember earlier when we were talking about streetscape um, he did he, he did put ten thousand dollars in his budget for this this year and this is where he would like to spend part of the savings from streetscape um, electric is to have this done um, the poles are there's one along the bike path there are three behind Tom's market that really badly need to be fixed um, I believe <coughs> one of them is close to Mills lawn there's one behind the BP one in the th six in the 300 block of Walnut two at Fairfield and King one behind the Bryan Center and one in front of the high school and I know one of these is broken and it's tied up right now um, so it, these these need to be done um, so I would like to bring before council at the next meeting a resolution uh, awarding this to high tech for forty five thousand dollars I would support that yeah. mm -hmm. okay. council yep. okay. um, and that is all I have 
We did have a report from Melissa. I think she is in St. Petersburg, Florida. She's in somewhere sunny, yes. Yes. Um, and she, I think that the uh, utility staff had one heck of a week last week um, reading her report and talking to her. I think there were some, some snafus related to right. meters and readings and right. she goes into detail so she deserved that vacation. Um, she did uh, and the staff worked very diligently and, and quite late actually into the evening for two days trying to get this billing corrected and so um, just uh, for the residents out there who have not yet paid your bill if your bill looks a little bit off please call the village offices because they have um, gone in and credited your bill appropriately and what if you especially if you're in uh, the book two if your account starts with the number two um, your bill is not the bill that you got and you is likely lower so um, please call the office and they will give you the correct amount thank you and she also reminds us to vote on election day mm -hmm. March 15th and apparently there are we have we have illustrations from our clerk in her report <laughs> did no one play Oregon Trail <laughs> I had never heard of that game I, okay yes I did that was, oh, that yes, was our son's you. it was our son's age group That's, yes there you go okay so yeah there was a lot of sickness and woe last week yeah. the week prior that's the reference there um, I'm very <laughs> pleased to report that Kathy Gudgel's background check finally <laughs> came back uh, of course squeaky clean as imagined she is uh, up and running and doing a great job so far um, and I've got a lot of plans for her so I'm, I'm very excited to have her <laughs> got a lot of plans. And, going. and yes please vote okay uh, future agenda items um, I think we March 21st resolution regarding Glen annexation so that's another issue related to the Glen the Glen's busy these days um, I think we'll probably have something potentially something back on the 21st about um, Sutton Farm so that did you want there did you want that to be the financial report regarding the proposal or did you want to sample do you want a resolution coming back no we're not ready for okay. a resolution we just want a little bit deeper discussion okay. and we want citizens to be aware that this is a discussion item okay. solar um, the solar plant right so so that was a resolution right mm -hmm. if well if I have the contract ready okay hmm. and a little more uh, dis discussion about the justice task mm-hmm mm -hmm. and I looks like we will we check on a Planning Commission report you will <laughs> okay um, so then then we'll have the cap report mediation report <coughs> so the 21st is is then we're, we'll talk a little bit about the flat rate structure we were supposed we were going to do that tonight but with Melissa out we decided to hold that um, so and, I, and I'm sorry are we ready for the Glen annexation is that yeah, right. in fact okay. okay yes my understanding is the county has approved the plans and so we're now ready to move forward because we're on a tight timetable once the initial resolution is passed mm -hmm. okay okay um and we don't have an executive session tonight correct Chris mm -mm. no nope. okay so I will entertain a motion to adjourn okay I so, move second all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye.